Chapter two, the bodybuilding beast. So picture this. It's the 1960s and Arnold is no longer just that ambitious kid from Austria. He's moved to Munich where the gyms are bigger, the weights are heavier, and the competition still not ready for what's coming. By the age of 19, he'd won his first major title, Junior Mr. Europe. But Arnold wasn't celebrating with champagne just yet. No, he had bigger trophies in mind. He was obsessed. And I mean obsessed. The guy trained six hours a day, every day, like he was in a Rocky montage that never ended. Most people would have quit after the first week of soreness. But Arnold, he embraced it. He loved the pain, called it the pump. To him, that burn in your muscles wasn't just a side effect of hard work. It was the feeling of greatness being built. Now, let me paint the picture here. Arnold wasn't just lifting weights, he was lifting vibes. Wherever he went, he exuded this cocky but lovable confidence. It's like he already knew he was going to be the best and everyone else just hadn't gotten the memo yet. But there was a problem. Europe wasn't the big leagues. Sure, the competitions were decent, but if you wanted to be the guy, you had to head west, way west, to California. And Arnold, he had his sights locked on one thing, Mr. Olympia, the holy grail of bodybuilding. Now, Here's where it gets fun. Arnold didn't just show up in America and start winning trophies. Nope. His first attempt at Mr. Olympia in 1969 was a total flop. He went up against Sergio Oliva, AKA the myth, a guy so ripped he looked like he'd been sculpted out of granite. Arnold lost, badly. And you know what he said about it? You know, I didn't consider it failure, I considered it education because that's Arnold for you. He didn't whine, he didn't sulk, he just went back to the gym and worked harder. He studied Sergio, figured out what made him great and vowed to crush him next time. By 1970, Arnold was back, bigger, better, and more determined than ever. This time, he didn't just win Mr. Olympia, he dominated. At just 23 years old, he became the youngest Mr. Olympia in history a record that still stands. From there, Arnold went on an absolute tear. He won Mr. Olympia six more times. And each time he didn't just show up to compete, he showed up to own the stage. He'd flash that signature smirk, hit a perfect pose and make it clear, you're not beating me today or ever. But let's talk about what really made Arnold special. It wasn't just his insane physique. Sure, the guy had muscles in places most people don't even have places. But what set him apart was his mind. Arnold wasn't just a bodybuilder, he was a strategist. He knew how to play to the crowd, psych out his competitors, and market himself as the guy everyone wanted to be, or at least look like. One of my favorite stories is from the movie Pumping Iron. Arnold talks about how he'd mess with his rivals backstage. He'd casually walk up to them before a competition and say things like, You look a little flat today. Did you forget to carb load? Boom. Instant doubt planted. That's next level mental warfare, folks. But here's the kicker. Arnold wasn't just a showman. He truly loved the sport. He loved the discipline, the camaraderie, and the chance to push himself to the absolute limit. To him, bodybuilding wasn't just about looking good. It was about proving that with enough work, you could reshape your body, your life, and even your destiny. By the mid-70s, Arnold had become more than a champion. He was a phenomenon. People who'd never set foot in a gym knew his name. He was on magazine covers, in documentaries, and in every conversation about fitness. And then in 1975, at the peak of his career, he did the unthinkable. He retired. Why? Because Arnold wasn't just chasing trophies, he was chasing the next big thing. He'd proven everything he needed to in bodybuilding, and now it was time to take on a new challenge. But before we move on, let's recap Arnold's bodybuilding legacy. Seven Mr. Olympia titles, a global fitness revolution, the ability to intimidate anyone with a single bicep flex. And most importantly, Arnold taught us this, the body follows the mind. If you believe in yourself and work hard enough, there's no limit to what you can achieve. So if you're still skipping leg day because it's too hard, just remember, Arnold was out there crushing leg day like his dreams depended on it, because they did.